So thanks everyone for joining. There'll be some people joining throughout the uh, throughout the session. So we'll, um, we'll keep the chat going and, and uh, please feel free to ask questions throughout this uh, webinar. Uh, we'll get to as que many questions as we can throughout the webinar and we'll also answer questions post the webinar. So feel free to, to just ping questions as they come. We will be recording this webinar as well. So this will be a recorded session and we're gonna run a couple of polls in the webinar as well. Um, I'm going to kick off with just talking a little bit about Gravity Sketch, but before doing so, actually I'll, I'll actually wait a little bit longer and, and we'll do a poll maybe midway through. So first, just want to talk a little bit about Gravity Sketch and, and what is Gravity Sketch. So um, just so for everyone's information, for those of you who, who may not be aware of Gravity Sketch, it is a 3D design tool. It's primarily delivered through the virtual reality headsets, Oculus Crest, HTC Vive, um, obviously the Oculus Rift and so forth. And the idea was always to bring your ideas to 3D in a much more faster, fluid way. Uh, right now we spend a lot of time sketching in 2D, but these are all 3D concepts. So we're sketching different views and we're trying to understand proportions, volumes and so forth. And then we really don't get to the 3D phase until a little bit later in the design process, sometimes when decisions have been made a bit too, too late. And so there's a lot of cyclical workflows and we'll talk about that in a bit. I really like this image here. This is a industrial designer. Um, Fed, you can see his um, Instagram tag at the bottom right hand corner. But what I like about this is, is, is his design studio here or his home design studio. Uh, he's got the iPad Pro and the pencil, which we also support. Uh, he's got his Oculus Quest, as well as like traditional forms like sketching up on the wall. And so it doesn't have to be a very invasive way of integrating this into your workflow. It could be very much part of the existing design workflow that you have and not something that's replacing anything, but just something that fits into the to the general workflow that you're building. What we're trying to do as a company is build an, an ecosystem of products, but also an ecosystem of, of community members, partners, and, uh, and universities. So we've partnered with, with quite a few hardware manufacturers to make sure that we deliver the best experience possible on the devices that we deploy on, including the iPad Pro, um, soon to be the Wacom tablet, uh, as well as all the virtual reality headsets we support. We have a, a couple of tier one in industrial design, automotive, and footwear design organizations as our customers. It's been a really great learning experience for us. We're, we're only started trading or selling the software since 2018 officially to enterprise businesses. So it's, it's great to see such, a, yeah, such an engagement from our customers to date. And we have some key partnerships as well as educational institutions using Gravity Sketch. Why Gravity Sketch? This is a big question and it could mean very many different things for each of you on the call, um, but it's intuitive. It's very easy to use. So whether you're 3D literate or you're just learning the, the whole 3D space, you can still take advantage of using Gravity Sketch in your workflow. So the other point, I'll just skip over collaborative. It fits in your workflow. You can export files, you can import files, and you can figure out where Gravity Sketch, uh, Gravity Sketch fits along your, your pipeline. It is collaborative by nature. So if you have a business, um, a business license with Gravity Sketch, you're able to collaborate amongst your peers and your team members and have like real time design review sessions and virtual reality. It's always connected. So landing pad is our cloud based platform. You can save files to landing pad, drag them down. You can also uh, bring in your images or reference files into Gravity Sketch or into landing pad and that comes seamlessly into Gravity Sketch and we're cross platform. Currently we support the iPad Pro and pretty much all of the six degrees of freedom virtual reality headsets. We'll soon be supporting desktop and so forth, but um, at the moment, this is, these are the hardware platforms we support. Oops, sorry. So what we understand is that visualization is the lifeblood of any design process, and it's particularly important for the footwear design process. Um, footwear is a very traditional form of design uh, for, very, for many, very many years, but the technology and the material side of things has rapidly increased. And we want to see the design tools also increase in terms of their adoption uh, as we move forward. So how do we bring a, a dose of this kind of physical craftsmanship into the digital space? And so we think in 3D and why not create in 3D from day one? This has kind of been a philosophy that we've been building upon here at Gravity Sketch. And here are a couple of examples from community members where they're early, very early adopt, adopters of Gravity Sketch, just loose freeform sketching, getting a better sense of their designs, proportions, and maybe just some of the key characteristic lines in, in, their, in their work. 
a couple of the work streams we've observed over the course of the past couple of years working with footwear um, is the first one is freeform sketching. So it's just jumping into Gravity Sketch and just start sketching kind of unrestricted. And we've seen this be a really powerful tool just to get those initial concepts and ideas out. Sketching over last has been another one that has been pretty great where people import a last, they understand the divine volume of the constraint they have to work to. And then they're able to sketch out lines, pull things apart and really kind of use that as the basis and understanding with confidence that their volumes are gonna work. Then bringing in 2D imagery and tracing over that imagery and pulling it apart. That's another really great workflow where you can ease into the 3D experience as opposed to really kind of doubling down on going 3D full speed from day one. And finally, these design reviews and presentations in virtual reality are extremely powerful for many of our customers where they're able to see something from the vantage point of one-to-one uh, -one scale as a customer might see on a shelf or all the way zoomed in as if they were to ant looking at a, a part of the tread and, and really kind of nailing down some of those 3D problems. If we look at the software pipeline uh, amongst our customers, we, seem, we tend to break it into four segments here where we have ideation, review and iteration, rendering and 3D realization. In the ideation phase, we see a lot of use of Procreate and Illustrator and sometimes Photoshop for light sketching. When it comes to review and iteration, this is where things like Zoom or WebEx or Microsoft Teams come into play and we end up using PowerPoint presentations. So we have to take these very kind of um, fluid ideas and bring them into a much more like kind of rigid format. And then when it comes to rendering, we have to build a 3D model or have some kind of 3D property. And you could do that in Blender, um, also Fusion and a few others. Uh, and then finally, you wanna bring it to 3D realization. So most of the factories are using Rhino. You end up getting the, the file re remade in, in, in Rhino sent back to you or send a sample back and so forth. What we're trying to do here, Gravity Sketch is cross the chasm from ideation all the way through to rendering and even into 3D realization. Uh, Rhino, uh, Gravity Sketch right now can export seamlessly to Rhino via FBX. Uh, we also have uh, OBJ and IGES exports, so you can get the content out of Gravity Sketch seamlessly into these other platforms. But also the review and iteration phase is really powerful here where you can jump into the session with all of your colleagues and actually hash out some of those 3D problems that you're trying to solve. And of course, you can ideate directly in Gravity Sketch, which we just saw on the previous slide. Uh, we look at our automotive customers for as the kind of starting point for a lot of these insights that we've driven to, to build out the product and we're now starting to engage pretty heavily with the footwear industry but from the automotive perspective what we saw was this kind of idea of thinking in 3d and then jumping into 3d sketching and then going into the 2d cad ecosystem via rhino or um, you can use alias or so forth and then going into rendering so footwear, sometimes we see going directly from Gravity Sketch to rendering and then finally ending up in a Rhino or a comparable product. And if we look at the, the geometry that we build in Gravity Sketch, this is a, quite important for some of you who are looking at that end-to-end -end pipeline. We start with NURBS information. That NURBS information can then be converted to mesh information. Quad-based meshes is what we tend to work with. And then you can subdivide that so you can have the very smooth surface. Um, these are very, subdivision is very easy, fluid kind of way of, of building out geometries. And we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit in the product demo in a moment here. Uh, we're working on the seamless transition from 2D to 3D and we realize not everyone has a virtual reality headset. It is, a, actually it's a pretty big price to pay when we think about it, it's $300. It, it's cheaper than an iPad, it's cheaper than a Wacom, but if there isn't a product ecosystem around to support the VR, Headset, it, it really is a struggle, I, I would say, for many people to, to go out and just spend $300 to use Gravity Sketch. So, how do we ease people into our ecosystem? And the iPad Pro has been a great way of doing that. But also, treat it as a companion application for those of you who do have VR already, where you can sketch out the side view, jump into VR, and start pulling that apart. We understand the dexterity, the muscle memory that you have with sketching. This could still be harnessed in the 3D space, and we want to make sure we can leverage that. You could take all your content that you made in Gravity Sketch, like for like into Rhino. Um, this is something that we've tried to really foster in the Rhino community, as well as in our footwear community. We'll be talking more about this on our socials, as well as on um, any of the kind of support tickets that you guys might raise, where you can bring in an FBX file, you bring it into Rhino, you get like for like geometry, the exact same points, surfaces, and all of the mesh data will come over smoothly. If you're on Rhino 7, you'll get all the sub D information as well, like for like. Uh, can't uh, kind of can't speak enough about this uh, collaborative teamwork, which we'll talk about here in a moment. 
multiple players in virtual reality across devices, being able to communicate and share ideas, really think about this beyond just the creative workflow. Think about how we might want to communicate with factories, communicate with marketing people, communicate with um, suppliers. This is a great way to facilitate and engage in really deep communication around a 3D object that has yet to, to exist in the real world. And again, another point on, on the hardware that we support, this is just a quick snapshot on a couple of logos of, of hardware that we support. So pretty much all of the virtual reality headsets on the market now that could be used on Steam or Oculus platforms, uh, we fully support. Uh, Wacom tablets right now are in, in beta, um, iPad Pro. There's a couple of virtual reality pens, which are interesting. And then if you use anything that's tethered to a PC, you're gonna need uh, a pretty um, high powered gaming graphics card. Uh, here are a couple of examples from the community. Um, again, please follow their, their um, please follow their Instagram pages and get a little bit more insight to how they use Gravity Sketch. But what's been great is to see how the early sketching that we saw in the very beginning of, of this kind of journey into footwear design has resulted in people really taking their designs much further and, and building them out into real credible design propositions. And of course, taking it to the to kind of the furthest degree where you're 3D printing your ideas and, and bring them to fruition. So again, we've seen many users printing out their models, being able to physically hold their models all within the Gravity Sketch ecosystem. So being able to sketch straight to print. And again, we, we are supporting the automotive industry quite, uh, quite early on in our developments and start to move into the, the footwear industry. And we've had in the back burner this concept art, um, entertainment type of industry that's been using Gravity Sketch. And we leverage a lot of those learnings and try to build a product that is a, in a holistic way. So you're gonna get benefits from the automotive industry as well as from the entertainment industry. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the demo where you can create a scene that you can present your work within, um, similar to how uh, some of the designers are creating scenes in which their characters or their, their imaginary or digital characters live. So today we're gonna to chat with Danny Dance uh, a little bit about his workflow, his adoption of Gravity Sketch and how it fit into his pipeline. We'll specifically be talking about the Nike 48 concept that he generated. And before we do that, we're gonna just jump into a little bit of a demo with Emil. So I'll hand over to Emil at the moment. And um, again, if you have questions, uh, please, please feel free to ask. Uh, before I hand it over, I'd just like love to have a poll really quickly on how many people have used Gravity Sketch or have exposure to Gravity Sketch. So we'll, we'll raise the poll momentarily and you guys will see kind of out of the 200 attendees who's, who's had that. Okay, we've got 85% have voted now. That was, that was pretty quick. All right, we'll go five more seconds. All right, everyone should be able to see those results there. Shay, can you see those results? Yeah, yeah, I can see those results cool. here. Yeah, so quite a few of you have never used it, which is uh, which is no problem at all. It's quite great. We're gonna hand over to Emil where he can walk through very early stages of design and then we'll, we'll jump into some of the intermediate uh, stages of the, of the design process using Gravity Sketch. So we're going to switch screens over to Emil, and uh, I'll let you take it over from there. I'll, I'll be narrating a little bit on top of, of, of Emil here, but um, you should see his screen momentarily. All right. So here we kind of laid out the journey of design from um, an image that you've imported all the way through to a final model. So if you import a 2D image here, yeah, all the way through. So if you import a 2D image here, you can you can bring that in and trace over that, that image. This is just a PNG or JPEG. Um, you trace over a 2D flat drawing. Um, there you go here. And we have a projection tool in Gravity Sketch you can project to that image and trace directly on top of that image. So that gives you a lot of confidence that you're actually, um, I guess, coplanar to, to the design that you've made. So we'll show that here. This is the ink tool with the uh, projection, planar projection mode turned on. And you could be quite gestural. Like this is, if you think about the iPad, this is a very similar way that you might be working on the iPad where you'd have the pencil instead. 
And once you feel pretty confident with that, you could then move into pulling those strokes off of the plane and into the digital space. And now you have this 3D representation. And while you're editing, you can edit point by point. You can actually do constrained movements in your edits. So that will preserve the silhouette of your sketch. So by lining your controllers up, um, kind of similar to how you might like line up a, a piece of wood that you push through a plane, you're able to have a much more controlled, accurate movement of, of the geometry. And you can see we have a little digital readout there as well. Um, the way you grab is just by intersecting your hand with any piece of geometry or any control point, squeezing the trigger or the, the grip trigger, and then just moving your hand around the space. So it makes it much easier than grabbing with a keyboard and mouse and clicking on a specific point. From there, you can break the, the symmetry. So you can see here we're, we're dealing with symmetry, but we know shoes are asymmetrical. So you can break the symmetry and start working on one side or the other independently so you can get the, the insole or the, um, the lateral side as well and bring in like the heel area and so forth. And surfacing has been a huge thing in Gravity Sketch. So you can migrate very quickly from those loose sketches into surfacing. Um, this, these surfaces were made with our bridge command. So we have a surface tool here, which works just as like a, a ribbon when you're kind of think about the Olympic, uh, Olympic ribbon dance kind of thing. Uh, very simple, very easy to use, but quite hard to control. And so what we've done is we've built this uh, bridge curve command allows you to take two curves and then create a surface between those two curves. And then that surface is fully editable. So you can go ahead and completely uh, tweak and manipulate that surface into the 3D form that you, that you desire. And so working through those surfaces, you're able to eventually get to a point where you're quite confident and then you can convert that surface to a sub D object. Once that surface is converted to a sub D object, you can start manipulating in completely new ways. So grabbing out a very specific part of the surface and extruding it or adding a crease to the surface or uh, adjusting the lines and so forth. So it's a very kind of fluid and intuitive way of working with geometry where you don't have to respect too much of the mathematical properties that you're dealing with. And finally, you can kind of dress up the design at the very end, adding some colors, adding the laces and kind of building out more of the details. And you can use this across the variety of different geometries that we provide. So we've only focused on ribbon and stroke, but you can also add in primitives. You can bring in a mannequin. You can kind of tell a story in VR, which we'll dive into in, in, in a moment here. Um, as we're kind of exploring this final proposition that, uh, that Emil has proposed here, let's take a poll and just see what you guys identify yourselves at as uh, we'll be looking at footwear designer, industrial designer, student. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll launch the poll here in a moment and uh, we can just see if we wanna to touch on anything additional. I'm gonna have a look at the chat while we're doing that. So if you can run the poll now, Rich, that'd be great. Give me a moment. <laughs> so I, I would take a couple of questions while I'm just uh, getting like. So exporting from Gravity Sketch to Keyshot um, and applying materials, uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, you can export as an OBJ, FBX, IGIS. So our export panel is right there in the hard disk. You click on the export button, and then you're proposed with um, a few different options here. OBJ, FBX, IGIS, and then you have some sub options as well as advanced options. So for those of you that are really precise about your pipeline, whether you're bringing it to Keyshot or Blender, you can kind of dress up or export the file exactly the way you, you'd hope to have it um, represented in the final software that you're bringing it to. Um, we might run another webinar if that's of interest to everyone, where we'll talk a little bit about how to get Gravity Sketch into other programs. Uh, please do let us know in the chat if that's something of, of interest. But as we see, the majority of, of you are kind of uh, no experience at all with Gravity Sketch. So it, it, it's probably best to, for us to just stick with the current pipeline um, in the tool and, and maybe propose some information that you guys can consume asynchronously. Um, so projecting surfaces or curves to the surface of a last is another question here. We'll do that right after the poll. So the poll's gone up now. Um, yeah, what do you identify as? Footwear designer, industrial designer, student, or other? Oh, Roshan has uh, mentioned he'd be up for sharing a little bit of the uh, key shot pipeline. 
Um, converting line strokes into sub D volumes, we don't have that yet. That is something that we have done in beta internally. Um, great, so about 43% of you guys are uh, professional footwear designers. We have some industrial designers on the call uh, as well as students and others. So great to have you all. Um, I think the subject matter is appropriate. Happy to continue answering questions here. So let's show projection, um, Emil, uh, projecting a stroke onto a surface or last. So you can see here, you can project directly onto the last. You have to have a kind of steady hand. Um, when we bring this feature set to the iPad, it might be a little bit easier for those of you to use with the Eiffel Pencil. Uh, once you grab the stroke and edit it, it does get pulled away from the last. So it's not magnetized by any means. Um, so it's a great way to get some character lines out, but then you have to be quite precise. And what I tend to do is I tend to just hover really closely to the surface and you can see where you're diving in and out of the surface there. So you can kind of approximate and again, Gravity Sketch is not to replace your CAD programs. It's not to replace Fusion or Rhino. This is a, a great way to get that design intent all the way through the pipeline. And doing that at the very beginning stages of the design journey could help alleviate a lot of stresses and a lot of reworks down, downstream. Um, we do support edge creasing and we're working on bringing edge creasing through the FBX export. That's another question that was raised. Um, we can, kind of quickly demo the edge crease, Emil. Maybe we can do something pretty dramatic here just so everyone can see that. Um, it's on the right hand, you'll have a little tools button that replaces the um, color button. And when you hold that down, you have a little pop-up menu and you can then crease edges. And so you can see here, that edge is now have a more of a crease, crisp creased edge. And the edge will turn blue once it's creased and then you can uncrease in the same way. Um, graphics onto surfaces. So right now we can texture a surface. We can't position a, a, a graphic all, all along a surface, for example, like you can't control where it sits on the surface. That's a big challenge at the moment. But let's say we have this, uh, this image here uh, of Danny's shoe. We can then project that onto the surface by grabbing the surface, holding it, and then placing the image against it. So this is a quick way just to get a little basic rendering. But for some of that more complex, like positioning logos and so forth, we, we do suggest jumping into, into Blender or Keyshot for, for the, some of that work. Um, just kind of reading through the questions here. Yeah, so parametric. So for the most part, everything is parametric in Gravity Sketch in the sense that, um, let's, let's draw a stroke here, Emil, and then we can just show like the stroke has some parametric properties to it. But of course, like parametrics in the sense of if I adjust a last, everything else adjusts, that's pretty far off from where we are at the moment. Uh, but here, let's say we were to edit the stroke, you can then play with the geometry and designs and all that edits in real time. So that's kind of the extent of, of the parametrics that we have in Gravity Sketch at the moment. But everything is preserved, all the history is preserved. When you open up a design or sketch in Gravity Sketch, um, you have the history of the individual object as well as the history of the scene. So that's, um, to some degree, that's really great to have. It's not at the same level as a SOLIDWORKS or other comparable CAD program, uh, but we introduce features as we see fit for industry when we're working with our customers and what makes the most sense for their pipeline. Um, texturing and bump maps, uh, not at the moment. We, we again, it's, it's really about that pipeline into Keyshot or even Substance Painter would be a great one to take Gravity Sketch into if you're doing some more of that final re rendering and presentation type of work. Uh, where we see Gravity Sketch currently positioned is at that initial ideation phase where you're just getting an idea out and you want to push it through. Um, cool. So I think we can move into chatting a little bit with, uh, with Danny about his workflow. And we'll bring up his design and how it could be set in a scene just in a moment here. But I'd like to welcome Danny to the call. Danny, you mind giving us a, an introduction to yourself, um, a little bit about your background? Hi, Shay, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Cool. Uh, yeah, first of all, thanks for inviting me. Um, it's really good to be here. Um, yeah, just a little bit about myself. So my name is Danny Dance. Um, I'm English. I've uh, been in the design industry for about 16 years. 
um, as a product designer and footwear designer. Um, I've designed for brands including New, Bo New Balance, Reebok, Adidas, and then most recently Puma. Uh, I was at Puma for 11 years working in sports equipment uh, for the football department, and then most recently football footwear. And then for the last few months, I've just been investing a lot of time um, trying to work on my 3D skills um, and just playing around on um, Gravity Sketch on my own kind of um, personal projects, just trying to kind of stay creative and um, explore some concepts like the, the Nike 48. Cool. So I wanted to ask you a couple of questions, um, just like we, we get these questions all the time from the community, whether it's on Instagram or whether it's with a customer. But just how do you find Gravity Sketch or how do you hear about Gravity Sketch? What was the kind of the moment that you heard about it? And if you can also package that with how, you know, what was your initial thoughts on 3D um, being in the industry for so long? You must have tried a couple of different solutions. Uh, yeah, for sure. So um, when it comes to 3D, um, I did um, industrial product design uh, back in 2000 to 2004 in Nottingham. And um, 3D design was a really big thing then, like using 3D Max. Um, alias, um, solid work. So 3D, especially if you're a product designer and you're working on 3D products, um, working with 3D software, I think is really, really important. Um, I would say with footwear design and probably a lot of forward designers that are on the call right now, um, up until most recently, I think 3D design wasn't really kind of one of the tools that you would use. Um, I think most footwear designers will tell you that your kind of like core toolbox would be Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Sketchbook Pro, Procreate, um, and then pen and paper. Um, a, lot, a lot of designers still use pen and paper. Um, 3D design generally would be left down to say your developer or for the, for the factories. So for example, if you work in a tooling, um, you do a, a 2D render or tech pack, send it out to Asia and they would work on the 3D file, send that back to you and then you get it 3D printed and start working on the development process. So, um, so yeah, so 3D design um, for me um, as a footwear designer got, got really, really big over the last year. Um, so I got into Gravity Sketch by um, just looking, at, looking on Instagram last year. Um, I was watching like some of the young designers like Finn and Red and um, Brian Manella and a lot of the um, designers that work over at Reebok, for example, um, and just seeing them playing around with this um, thing called Gravity Sketch. And then of course, I just did a bit of research um, looked at the Oculus, um, invested in that. It was a few hundred euros. Um, and then got the software and then um, watched a lot of tutorials. I think I had a session with you as well, Shay. And from yeah. what I remember, so I had a, a good session with yourself um, for about an hour. Um, but I owe a lot of, um, a lot, a lot of I owe a lot of uh, my skill set to um, people like Red and to Finn that I've uh, reached out to in the design community to ask questions about, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? Um, how did you create that kind of effect? And um, the design community um, on Instagram anyway has been amazing. You know, they, everybody just shares kind of um, things very, very open about how they've created something. And um, I found that really, really cool actually. Yeah, that's, that's something I'm just so impressed with the footwear industry, um, as, well as, as well as a lot of our auto guys, like just the amount of sharing that's happened. Um, you would think some people are like, oh, this is my ace up my, Ace up my sleeve, for example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's, it's totally not the case. People are sharing techniques, how to use it, and and I feel like as long as we can continue to foster that, we're 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 going to keep pushing the software in the right direction. And that's something that we're personally, I'm personally committed to, and, and the rest of the team is quite committed to is listening to the community, listening to the voice of the community, and helping foster more conversations around what needs to go into the product and when. Um, one of the questions we, we get, and we have quite a few people that have never used Gravity Sketch in the call now, is like, how long did it take you to get up and running? Like, how did it long take you to get to the point where you can confidently say, okay, this is something I want to take to Key Shot, or this is something I want to propose to, you know, a client or so forth? Yeah, so I think that was what's kind of really surprised me with the software, actually. So I invested in an Oculus and then Gravity Sketch around September last year. And um, I wanted to give myself, say, three months, like to the end of 2020, to kind of get really kind of up to speed with how to use Gravity Sketch. And um, like I say, I started in September, and I think within six weeks, I was really surprised that I kind of like created something that resembled a, a shoe. Um, just playing like with a midsole, a rubber outsole, then a kind of basic flipper, and just started manipulating um, the last that's included in the software. And um, yeah, I mean, I think credit to you guys. I think there's a lot of really good tutorials on YouTube and there's really good tutorials within the software as well. And um, anything that I couldn't do, I, like I said, I just reach out to um, designers like Finn and to Red 
And uh, those guys were amazing. They would just send me like some quick kind of videos back. Um, just drop me some um, direct Instagrams kind of straight away and just say, listen, this is how you do it. You want to kind of select this kind of edge and then extrude it out. And then, you know, if you, if you invest the time and put a few hours into it, I mean, it's surprising just how intuitive and how fast and easy um, that software is. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. This is, I remember giving you that demo. And um, for us, it's, it's never really about um, how do we convince you to use it? It's all about like, can we show you a couple of things here? And if it makes sense to you, how do we support you in that journey of onboarding? And I'd just like to extend the, this offer out to everyone that's on the call. If you're looking to bring this into your organization or, or bring it to your team, uh, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to set up a session. And same thing I did with Danny, just walked him through it, um, showed him what was possible. And then from there, kind of pointed him in the direction of a few YouTube videos. Uh, I'd like to transition here to the Nike 48 concept because this is a concept that you kind of, I guess it's a culmination of your gravity sketch skills as well as your blender skills. So it'd be great to kind of walk us through that. And I have Emil here on the screen. He's pulled that up and uh, we'll switch over to his screen as the main screen. And you can just talk through and Emil will navigate as, as, you're, as you're speaking then. Cool, sounds good. Um, I mean, first of all, this kind of, um, this kind of uh, virtual presentation and almost a bit like a virtual design review. I think this is like one of the benefits of the software. Um, it's really, really cool, the fact that you can put all your inspiration images and the models. Um, I really think that this is going to be the future for kind of design reviews um, in the not too distant future. Um, yeah, if we, I guess if we just start off with the inspiration, I think of the far left. Yeah, this kind of board here. So, um, so yeah, at some point at the end of last year, um, I was going through social media and um, I just came across this image, uh, the one in the top left-hand corner, it's the plastic rings that connect beer cans together. Uh, yeah, this image here. And um, the, the thing that I was uh, reading about was just about how bad plastic is obviously for the environment and how it kind of damages sea life um, and how kind of a lot of um, beer manufacturers are starting to use like a sustainable glue or even like recycled cardboard as a packaging to replace plastic rings. Um, but I was actually kind of, um, uh, kind of inspired by the actual plastic um, rings itself and the design of it and just kind of how simple and what it means, the fact that it supports kind of four cans together, it offers some structure, kind of like how kind of transparent or translucent it is. Um, and I just started to think about a shoe and I kind of looked at that kind of one component and I just thought, okay, cool, what about if that actually wrapped around uh, the midfoot, could offer um, support, and then thinking about football boots um, in particular, I just thought, okay, well, it has like four holes where the cans um, uh, fit in. What about if that actually wrapped around the football boot and then maybe connected inside, say, before the stud, so it actually fully wraps around in like a 360 kind of cage or like some sort of like web cage. Um, so yeah, that was kind of like the starting point. Then at the same time, when I was going through social media, I was looking for Instagram. Um, I came across um, something called uh, Ninja Recordings, which is um, a record label. And um, just the word kind of like ninja just kind of stuck in my head. And um, I was thinking about what a ninja kind of is and what it does. And um, I kind of connected that to football and the football consumer. And I just thought it was quite a cool kind of narrative to build a concept. And I had these two things in my head. I had um, the plastic rings and then the ninja thing um, in my head. And then I just kind of challenged myself to work on a personal project. Um, over a 48 hour period. So really, really quick, really, really agile. And um, I just wanted to realize and get that idea out of my head and, and onto, onto screen. Um, so in the bottom left, there's some like um, inspiration images. Um, we can just see there, if you just zoom in. And um, this is like something I really, really like. I really like these kind of like technical call outs and these kind of small details. Uh, on products. These are kind of like details that usually you would hide on a product. Usually they'd be on the inside or somewhere on the back. Um, but these kind of um, details like caution and how many components make up a product, um, the speed that something's going, I think that's really, really cool. So I use that as some sort of um, design direction for my concept. And then the images with the car seats, you can just see in the top right hand corner. Um, this I kind of explored some other kind of um, images based on the beer can plastic because that's not the kind of coolest image um, to be inspired by. So I tried to find like um, an analogy like in the industry and I looked at automotive and how with high speed cars you have the driver that's like harnessed um, within the car seat um, with the car seat belt kind of um, giving you that kind of same support and stability. So 
Um, those are kind of like really the driver images for the project. Yeah, and then kind of moving over to the process. So um, the image you see at the top, that's uh, 2D render that I did in Photoshop. So started with some line arts and Illustrator, took that into Photoshop, um, and then just started playing around um, with lighting, with shadows. And um, I didn't want to lose the essence as well of, um, of the cage. Um, I didn't want to lose the essence of the actual, the plastic um, rings. Uh, that was the core kind of inspiration image. And so I wanted, wanted to keep it really, really simple. Um, so before I went into Gravity Sketch, I already had a 2D render, um, which is the image on the top. And I used that as my reference image and took that into Gravity Sketch. And then, so when, then when you, sorry, yeah, Danny, when you yeah, brought this in, did you trace over or, or how, how was the transition from going from that 2D sketch to 3D? What, what method did you take? Uh, from the 2D sketch, so um, I dropped my 2D um, JPEG in landing pad, uh, put that into Gravity Sketch, and then basically started to sketch on a plane. So using the stroke tool, um, just doing like a very, very kind of flat sketch with um, all the kind of main points uh, on that football boot, like the heel area, and the cage, uh, the midfoot, the toe, just basically tracing that kind of image like you can see right there with the red, um, with the red lines. So I traced um, the image um, on a flat plane. And then when I was happy with the sketch, I basically um, bake the mirror and just basically separate it and start to move it away. Uh, pretty much how Shay showed me uh, at the end of last year. So basically separate the lines and move it either side of, of the last. And um, the last um, was the one that was included in the gravity sketch. And, and can you talk a little bit about like how I guess like, you know, how, how easy did this fit into the workflow or was this like something that you're scrapping everything else and bring this in, in terms of like gravity sketch fitting in, like is it experimental at this stage or are you already kind of confident that you can move through a set workflow with, with the tool? Uh, this was kind of, um, this was kind of one of the first kind of real projects that I kind of, um, I wanted to really create a really good um, 3D model. Um, I experimented with some kind of, um, Rough sketches, just playing around with some sneakers, with some midsoles, just kind of very basic 3D models. But this is one of the very first projects that I gave myself that I really wanted to try and like do a fairly high quality 3D model in Gravity Sketch. And, and what were like the key benefits that you saw to, to adopting this at this stage in the workflow versus working in the traditional method? Uh, well, the biggest thing is the fact that you're creating something in 3D. Um, before my process would be um, hand sketches and many, many phases of that. Then I'd go into Illustrator and Photoshop, and then we'd go to maybe the sample stage, you know, if this is a project for a, in a professional environment. Um, what's really good is you can actually start to explore and see whether that actually works in 3D form. Um, and the fact that you're actually walking around in, in VR, like around that kind of model, you can see whether proportions work, you can see whether um, you can see that it functionally works, whether aesthetically it works. Um, and yeah, I think um, sometimes, um, for example, like where I had that 2D render, I mean, I will make some tweaks when I figure out what works and what doesn't as I'm going through the process. Sure. So, I, so I decided to strip a few things back, yeah. Yeah. So what you guys can see is that we have Jaren in the, in the, um, in the same room. So Jaren's our design community manager. And, um, and Amol is, is on the customer success side, um, also our product expert. So you can work collaboratively in the same space and also present. And so we kind of wanted to show you if we all had VR headsets in the call today, we can all be in the same space, kind of walking through it and seeing it um, in 3D. Uh, sorry, Dan, I'll let you get back to kind of the, the, the workflow of the journey. Yeah, so, um, so yeah. Um... The, the fact, um, yeah, so I used the Nike 48 as kind of almost like the very first um, project in Gravity Sketch, and I wanted to create like a really kind of good kind of model. Um, but I mean, it really helped that I had a 2D render to start off with, so I had like the proportions already there. And, um, and yeah, so I just played around with strokes, um, move those uh, either side of the last. And then of course, because the medial side is, is not symmetrical to the lateral, um, I basically then bake um, the symmetry and then start to adjust some of the medial lines to, to fit closer to the last and then start playing with surfaces. And then 
yeah, just really just taking one component by one component. So maybe working on the tooling first, then working on the cage, um, then working on some TPU skins, um, and just going through it almost like how the shoe's made, just component by component. So Emil's just showing how you can bring a last into a gravity sketch to work with. Um, and you get the last directly in um, in the software when you download it. So you can bring in bring in a shoe last and um, you can then manipulate and work with that last directly. It is optimized as well for subdivision. So you can just manipulate the last and subdivide it and continue working as if it was a, uh, oh, this looks to be a little defect on the last. <laughs> we'll have to update that. Um, but you can just manipulate and edit it as you would um, any other piece of sub -G geometry. And like if you delete the top of the last year, you can actually just turn it into the sock. So if, could, this could be like a knitted, a knitted um, upper, and you can start manipulating and pulling things around. So is this the the process you found the most helpful, Manny? Yeah, this is pretty much how I did it. Um, yeah, I think um, probably actually one of the very first things I did, like. Um, when I took the reference image in is um, I bought the last in that was already built into the software, like as you've done. Um, probably fade it out, so it's kind of a little bit transparent, so you can see your reference image behind. And then um, you see the last is actually very, very different to my sketch. And depending on each designer's sketch, then you can basically just adjust the last and start dragging some of the points. And maybe, maybe like the opening, for example, is very, very wide on there. You just start grabbing a few points and a few edges and just start kind of shifting them around. And um, it's got quite a fun process to do that, but I think um, I think you need to get the shape of the, the upper or the last kind of right first, um, or else you can waste a lot of time afterwards um, uh, yeah, playing with all the other components that work around. I think it's really important to get the, the last shape um, correct and adjusted to your sketch or whatever your reference image is first. So this is exactly how we do it. Yeah. One of the one of the questions here is about thickening a surface and. Um, we get this question from footwear designers more than any other <laughs> any other design group. Um, yeah, we we know we need to get to this. We need to thicken surfaces. Um, I can only say it's going to come. I just don't know when it's going to come. But um, we have mathematicians actually working at Gravity Sketch, which are dedicated to just figuring out these kind of more complex mathematical problems. And there's it's a twofold thing, right? It's the it's the the kind of power that you need the device to be able to perform at, uh, as well as the number of of triangles or, or meshes that the, the software needs to render. So, and then the, the UX to it. So how do you create a great user experience? So just something we're gonna be exploring with, experimenting with, and, and couldn't give you a definitive date when it's coming, but we, we hear you loud and clear. The Kinning Surfaces is, is on the horizon. Um, yeah, maybe we get back to the presentation here as we have about 15 minutes left in the, in the session. Uh, Danny, a couple of folks out there are pretty interested in maybe dissecting the boot a little bit. Um, maybe we could do a little bit of that and then talk about some of the some of the final um, renders and so forth and that, that blender pipeline. Oh yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, so I guess if you zoom in on the model, um, kind of under the innovation is like the tooling view, the bottom view, which looks pretty nice there. Um, I guess there's kind of like three kind of major components. There's like um, four foot plates where the four foot studs are coming out. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, so the tooling is basically broken into two parts. Um, uh, there's the phantom web cage that I call it, which is the green kind of area. And that's kind of, it's really the kind of key story and the key innovation. Um, I see that as like a separate injection on the shoe. Um, it's not loose, it's always connected to the tooling, but it's kind of floating around the upper. So the idea is, you have a very kind of nicely snug fitting compressed upper and the football boot that sits on a, a decoupled plate. So the plates in two parts and then the green cage, which is kind of inspired by the, the plastic rings, which was a very, very first um, inspiration image. That is like a soft, flexible um, support cage that wraps fully around the upper and then wraps around the tooling and um, connected to uh, four of the studs. Um, and Emil, if you don't mind, could you grab uh, a couple of pieces here and, and just edit them just so people can see what geometries were used to, uh, to develop some of these ideas? 
right, so here's the uh, the cage. The phantom cage is what it's called, yeah? That's the one, yeah. Yeah. So how did, how did you go, go about doing this? Was this a, was this a, a surface that you converted to sub D or did you start with a cube? Yeah, what was your process was, here? Yeah, it was a surface. It was surprisingly quite easy to make as well. So I just started with a side view um, with a reference image um, and then just basically used a surface tool and create a surface that's just the right width and then took one of the edges and just kept extruding the edge mm. to give, um, with the mirror on so it's symmetrical. Um, and just get pretty much like a, a representation of how it looks on a lateral side view. And then of course, on the opposite side, it's, it's mirrored. Uh, and I just connected it. And then when I was happy with um, this kind of like continuous surface that creates this red cage, then of course I have to give it some, some um, depth, which is what the previous question was talking about. And that's, that was like a little bit challenging because you have to almost um, take every edge and then just extrude it at 90 degrees to mm. give you that edge thickness. But um, it, just, it just takes a bit of time and a bit of patience, but um, it's, it was surprisingly easy. Yeah, yeah. And, and how about the, the Nike swoosh? I'm quite, quite interested in that. Was, is that a piece of gravity sketch geometry? Did you import that? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I found like logos were a little bit difficult. Um, but what I did, I brought a JPEG into landing pad um, and then used that as a reference image. So within Gravity Sketch, I brought a JPEG of a swoosh in. Um, mm -hmm. I traced, oh, okay. it, traced it with a stroke. I see. And then created a surface. And then again, just played around with creating a thickness to it. And the, 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 there's, there's also the, the swoosh on the, on the, um, the sole of the, of the boot as well. Yeah. And that one has like this chamfer to it. How'd you do that? That's a, that one's pretty interesting. It had like two, it was like this kind of shaded chamfer bit there. Is that a crease in the head, in the surface or something? Exactly. Yeah, it's a crease right on the middle. So um, again, like, you know, I didn't want to just keep um, kind of some of the surfaces just being really, really flat. I wanted to have a bit of interest. So I wanted to create this kind of um, nice kind of chamfer, as you said. So um, when I had a flat swoosh with, um, with a thickness, you can just add like a row that goes right down the middle. And then I use mm -hmm. a group tool and then selected all of the, the points and lines kind of right down the middle and then just drag them up just to give that kind of like nice um, shampoo to it, like really defined. And there's a question around precision from the audience here. Like how precise can you be? I, I have my personal opinion on it, which I'll share afterwards, but I'd love to hear what your, your thoughts are. Um, I don't think it's, for me, it's not really intended to be overly precise. I mean, I kind of like that um, with this kind of software program compared to other ones like say Rhino or SolidWorks is they're very kind of accurate 3D software programs. For me, this is just like a visualization program. I think it's, for me, it's about kind of um, visualizing a concept in, in 3D. It doesn't need to be um, really, really accurate. I mean, of course it can be if you spend like lots and lots of time and you you zoom right in and make sure kind of every edge is really kind of meeting surfaces. So I, I think it is possible, um, but I'm sure Emil will zoom in and find a few little, little kind of mistakes on that. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm interested what you, what you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it's it's we've we've equated accuracy to millimeter precision as as just people that are making products for so long because our tools have demanded that, but. I feel like accuracy in let's say the Renaissance period was really about how close to the hand could you get like the, the initial intent. And so we've kind of coined the term internally that like creative fidelity. And we're trying to really focus on that. Like what's the creators, like how do we um, stimulate like the creator's initial intent and make sure that that stays true all the way throughout. So giving it that utmost kind of the fidelity is of like what you would have for the pen, like how, how precise can you be the pen? Some may say extremely precise and others may say, oh, I need, you know, CAD to give me the exact, you know, 90 degree orientation. Um, so we're, we're, again, we're just trying to err on the side of that di the digital craftsmanship as opposed to like the digi digital accuracy, but accuracy in the sense of millimeters, um, we, we're looking at accurate, accuracy in the sense of the hand. And moving forward as a, as a company, what we want to build is like, this should come into Rhino really seamlessly. And the factory should have very minimal adjustments and edits, right? And those edits should come back to you, which you can then view in Gravity Sketch and move forward with. And those, those edits may be around tolerances for a mold, for example. Um, and, and through that process, you'll learn how to be more accurate in terms of production and what's production ready. 
So that's kind of the way that, that I'm viewing the whole accuracy conversation. Um, I, I hope that resonates. I think um, it clearly right. depends, um, Shay, as well. I think it depends where you want to take the model as well. So, for example, I took um, the gravity sketch model as an OBJ into Blender. And then when you start rendering, which takes like a long, long time, if you then see that some surfaces aren't meeting, they do show up quite, quite bad. So, if, if your intention is to do like a really good uh, photorealistic render, then of course you probably want to get your model quite accurate. Yeah, and have you found that to be to be possible in Gravity Sketch with your skill set? Like, can you get to that level of, of fidelity? Yeah, I think for me, a lot of it, especially with this one, this project here, a lot of it was trial and error. So the amount of times I did um, work on the 3D model and I thought it was kind of at the stage where it was very, very accurate, then I'd take it as an OBJ into, into Blender. And then I'd see there was some mistakes, like some um, parts slightly floating, which looked not so good when they're rendered. Mm -hmm. And I have to go back into Gravity Sketch and then, um, and then tweak that, that area where there's a mistake. And then you go back in Blender, then maybe you rotate and you see another one. So I was, I was back and forth quite often, but um, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah, and, and that's something to note. I mean, we're, we're always taking feedback on board and we'd like to get to the point where you as a creator don't have to do too much round tripping. Um, and that's uh, it's, it's an issue with the Quest, to be honest. Like we can only get a certain level of rendering out of that device. It's essentially a mobile phone, but um, we see five G and, and streaming three D content to the headset becoming an, an, a kind of a, an opener to, to to new ways of of rendering and, and hopefully getting to the point where we can have more realistic renders within the software, so you can more accurately identify where two surfaces are meeting. We also have snapping of surfaces together which takes a little bit more time, but, um, but once you kind of master that, you can make sure that those things are all um, completely butted up against each other to kind of seal it off. I think Emil might, might demo this in a moment here. The, way, the thing I, I really want to mention to everyone is that this is still a, a work in progress for us. It's a, it's a comparable tool that you can use with your design team or um, even on your own, but at the end of the day, we're, we're far from finished. And if you look at tools like Rhino, um, you know, SOLIDWORKS and so forth. They've had years and years uh, of time to develop their, their suite. And we're just on the beginning of our journey. Um, you know, 2018 was the, the first time we've launched a commercial piece of software. So we still got a ways to go. Um, in your time of working with Gravity Sketch, what have been like the significant updates, Danny? Or, you know, what, what has been your, your feeling about the update cadence and being able to see things and kind of come to uh, come to the tool, like new things come to the tool in this, this way that we're developing the software. Do you have any feedback for us? Um, yeah, I remember, I think it was towards the end of uh, last year when we had a couple of calls and um, you asked me kind of like what's missing. And I think a lot of footwear designers will say the stitch, being able to like show kind of stitching, especially on say sneakers. I mean, on something that's very seamless like this, it's not an issue, but if you go to work on a, a concept that's a sneaker, um, and there, there is ways, I think, um, you've got like tutorials on YouTube about how to, how to do that. Um, so, so that was quite interesting. Um, uh, to, to be honest, I've not really struggled with that many things, to be honest. I mean, I had the same comments when I first started um, about trying to create like a, a thickness to a material. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, for example, if you have like a surface, like a piece of paper here, an easy way to, to kind of get that would be to just duplicate it. And then to be able to drag it out with a thickness to it already. Um, but the way to do it actually on the gravity sketch is to just select each edge and then extrude it at 90 degrees and connect. So it's quite a little bit manual. Um, but um, I think the results are good. And also think about the time that you spend in 3D software like say Rhino to create a very similar model, you'd probably be even longer than using gravity sketch. Nice. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, if you had any advice for, for some of the folks on the call, um, both professionals and kind of newcomers to the, to the solution, as well as students, um, I guess it doesn't have to be gravity sketch specific. It could just be design advice in general. I know that you're setting off on your own now to, with your own studio. Um, it's a big move to move away from industry and, and do consulting work. And I'm sure many of us can benefit from, from a little bit of a, a little bit of your experience and, uh, yeah, any, any thoughts you might want to share? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, probably a couple of thoughts. Um, 
I would probably say when it comes to like 3D modeling, um, like the way that I kind of see it and kind of how I was kind of like brought up in the industry is, um, and it's something that's always in the back of my head as well is, um, I think with 3D design, you can also kind of um, impress people with, with your kind of like model or your render. And I think you shouldn't really forget about the actual design process and, and, and how, you know, what you, how good your design is or how unique your, your design is. Um, I think sometimes with 3D softwares, um, not necessarily talking about Gravity Sketch right now, but you can hide um, kind of like average design or kind of poor design with a really, really good model because people are kind of blown away when they see um, you know, something from 3D. So I think that's something that's like a bit of advice to myself as well, um, to, to always remember that design is key, uh, good design is key. Um, and a little bit of advice about um, using Gravity Sketch for those people that are just starting out is just to persist with it. Um, I remember the first time I put the Oculus on with the headset and then the, uh, the handheld uh, joysticks. And uh, it's, it's a little bit kind of strange to start off with, but it's really, really cool. Like the fact that you can walk around your model and that you can use these kind of like two joysticks. It's better than using a mouse to me. It's, it's really fun to use. Um, but I would say for anybody that's just starting on it, it's just to persist with it. it takes a bit of time, like anything. I watch a lot of tutorials and um, just reach out to people in the design community, like people that are actually using it and modeling with it, and ask, ask questions and just look at the comments. And, and I'm sure many, many designers will come back and tell you this is how I've done it. And that's basically what I do. Yeah, and, and we'll continue to also support the community. Um, Jaren, our community manager, who's currently in VR right now with AMOL. Um, he makes videos every Tuesday, like Tips Tuesday. Um, AIM also contributes to those videos where we show you guys tips and tricks on how to use how to use the tool. Um, and we're just going to continue to do our best to support this this space. We we think that Footwork deserves a tool like this, and um, hopefully our tool can continue to to support this this type of workflow. Um, we have a f like one minute left. We'd love to answer a couple last questions if anyone has any um, any questions for for Danny on his concept. Um, please feel free to, to ping him in the chat and we'll try to address those in the next minute, next two, three minutes here. Um, getting a lot of, uh, it was a great presentation, Danny, so that's good. Um, good questions. Yeah, we're not, not, not getting too much more. I'm curious about um, the story. Um, do ideas always come from a piece of paper? Someone said they believe ideas always come from a piece of paper. So curious about um, the ideation sketches and the importance of the ideation sketches in that journey. Yeah, I mean, um, as you can see on the demo right now, this is kind of like not really an area that I've really explored, to be honest. Like I know a lot of designers go into gravity and um, freestyle and um, bring kind of inspiration images in. I mean, that's something I will do in the future to start playing around with that. Um, the way I see gravity sketch is it's kind of like two pronged. It's the 3D sketching in, in space and then the 3D modeling. And I've like used it mainly, to be honest, to, to 3D model um, concepts I've already got like a sketch off or I've already got like a, a 2D render off. Um, yeah. And do you think this is because you're um, already pretty seasoned with your sketching skills? Like you, you could probably knock out like silhouettes quite easy, quite fast. So you, you kind of use the, the skill that you're dominant with and then you partner with the 3D aspect. Is that, is that the, the thought process there? Yeah, so, so I think you just, uh, just nailed it there. I mean, I like um, pen and paper. I think there'll always be a place for pen and paper in design, especially footwear design. Um, but yeah, it's just natural for me to, to kind of do like thumbnail sketches or like um, something a bit more refined. I like to kind of have a base before I go into gravity sketch. But um, also at some point, I'm going to challenge myself to be um, to just go in there and like freestyle and just see what I can come up with because um, some of the results are really good. Uh, but it's just about having time and, and, and investing that uh, energy into doing it. Awesome. Well, listen, everyone on the call, um, we're going to do a, a quick survey at the end of this call. Um, we'd love to get you guys uh, in, interested and engaged in Gravity Sketch in any way we can. Um, for those of you, again, that want to bring it to your design studios, um, as I did with Danny almost like a year ago, maybe it was quite some time ago. Um, happy to do a one-to-one -one tutorial. Um, we can, you can fill out uh, your interest in, in the survey and maybe we can share with you and your, your design team. But I want to thank everyone for showing up. It's a, it was a great turnout and I think it's been a, 
pretty informative even for me. I knew a little bit about the Nike 48 concept, but kind of didn't know all those details. So I also want to thank you, Danny, for, for the time and, and, uh, and sharing that with us. No, my, my, my pleasure, honestly. Great. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and you uh, look forward to chatting, you, chatting with you again soon. And best of luck with your new studio. Cool. Thank you very much. Take it easy. All right, everyone. Have a great evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. Ciao. Ciao.